Hey everybody, this is Brian here. Today we're going to walk through setting up a Z-Wave Link garage door opener. We're going to do this from start to finish, step by step. A couple of different ways to do this. The way that we're going to do it today is with a garage door remote opener. The advantage to this, in my opinion, is you're going to have everything located in a little tiny project box. You can throw this box anywhere in any outlet in the house and be able to do this. So if you ever have to reset the controller or anything like this. Everything's right here in this box. You don't have to get on a ladder, you don't have to get up to the garage door. Open or itself. Everything's contained right here. The reason we're doing it this way. A couple things we have here. Any kind of three prong plug. Strip at the end. That's gonna give power to our relay. This is our Z-Wave relay. You're gonna have Wires over here for the power. You're gonna have a couple of wires over here to control the garage door opener itself. A garage door opener and the project box. This is gonna be very, very remedial. I'm not very good at this kind of stuff. I was able to pull this stuff off pretty easily. If I was able to pull it off, you guys should have no problem. We're gonna start with the garage door opener itself. We're gonna crack this open. I'm going to show you the circuit board in here. Every garage door opener is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to show you mine. In order to control this, mine's pretty easy. It's pretty basic to see in the circuit board where the circuits lead to and where you need to kind of hook up the relay over here. So let's get started. I've got to get the, the kind of back bracket off here. I'm going to take a screwdriver and knock that off. I'm going to get a screw back here, unscrew this. And this will get the casing off. Again, I'm not very good at this stuff, and this is all pretty easy. Open the casing, take the battery out, and then take the casing off of the opener, and you have your little circuit board there. These are your three buttons. The only button I'm going to be using is a middle button. I would assume a good 80% of America probably uses this button. I could be completely wrong. Maybe I just live in a ghetto and I can't afford these two buttons. But this is the only button we're going to be working with today. You, you take the little electrical panel out, and that's what it looks like on the back. It is very obvious that these two leads go to that center button, button down here, the only button I'm using to open my garage door. So those are the leads we're going to be working with today. On the relay itself, you have the three wires that go to power. You have the constant, you have hot, and you have the ground. Pretty basic. Green, white, black. On the power cord that you stripped, same colors, green, white, black. Again, I'm not very good at this stuff, and if I'm able to pull it off, you should be able to pull it off. That's going to give you the power. This is going to give you the controller. So these two blue wires, that's what's going to go to this little garage door opener circuit board. Those little four leads to that middle button. That's going to open and close the garage. That's going to give the relay power. What we're going to do now is go ahead, take these four leads. I'm going to solder a smaller wire. These are pretty, these are pretty thick. So I'm going to take a smaller wire. I'm going to solder the smaller wire onto these four leads. Then I'm going to take a wire nut and connect the smaller wire to these bigger wire. And that should give us the controller. But as for the garage door opener, that's all it is. Again, they're all going to be a little different. That's mine. The four leads I'm going to be working with are right there. You can actually get pretty close, and you can see where they actually come in. The circuit follows the top two up here, and then the bottom circuit follows the bottom two down here. So I'm going to have one wire on the relay connected to the bottom two, one wire on the relay connected to the top two. Again, this is just my system. I'm working with the Genie. I forget the uh, model number. I'll put that down in the comments. I'll have all this stuff down in the comments. The uh, relay that you need, the garage door opener itself that I'm working with. I'll even throw in the project box that I'm working with. All right. Next section is how to actually solder on the relay to the circuit board itself. I'm not very good with solder, so this should be interesting. Stand by. All right, we are back. I went and I went, went rerouted. 
the top wire connecting the top two contacts through this little hole. Again, this hole for my particular garage door opener is going to go to the center of the case. So I don't want to go through that hole and I do not want to cover that hole because that's going to go through the center of the case through that hole right there. So I rerouted it through there. The contacts, the wires, nothing will touch. I should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this case. I'm going to go ahead and put the circuit board back in here. Like that. Make sure everything is going to go. And nothing's in the way. Oh, maybe that's why. And then backwards. All right, so we are good to go. Circuit board's back in the bottom of the case. Take the top of the case. And you throw the top of the case. Again, you can see where you do not want to cover up that center hole. Top the case back on. Close, close, close. This case actually has a little indentation down here. I'm going to go ahead and run it right through there. And the case is back together. Go ahead and we're going to take the screw again. Screw through. Screw the case closed. And the garage door remote is done. So essentially all you're going to have is the same remote that you started with, except now you're going to have two leads coming out the bottom of the remote control, as you can see there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the battery. I'm going to put the battery back in. Assuming that is the right way that the battery goes. I'm going to hit the button and the battery is in the wrong way. Fail. Battery out. Put the battery back in the other way. Button. Hit the button end. The garage door. Zoe! And there's my dog. There's proof the garage door opened because my dog started floating. Alright, so the garage door is done. You're going to have two leads coming out of the bottom here. We all just fooled my dog. You have two leads coming out of the bottom of the remote. Those leads are going to connect to the two blue leads on the Z-Wave relay. And that is going to power the garage, or control, I should say, the garage door. It's not going to power it, it's going to control it. So we're going to go ahead and connect the blue lead to the black wire. We're going to take a wire nut. Wire nut the blue lead coming out of the relay. Again, the relay is an Evolve LFM20. The one blue lead coming out of the relay. We're going to take the other blue lead coming out of the relay. Going to the black lead on that we installed on the remote switch. That is the controller for the relay. You have the two relay connections connected to the garage door remote. The other three connections on the relay itself are going to be for power. We're going to hook those up right now. Very, very easy stuff. Again, I'm not a pro at this kind of stuff in the least. I know how to do this. This one project. Green goes to green on the power cord that we purchased from Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, anywhere you prefer to your shopping. Black on the power cord is going to go to black on the relay. We're going to wire out that. Did it again. Almost did it. At this point, you don't want to do this. Take this back off. Learn from my mistake. You want to go ahead and you want to put 
at this point, you want to bring in your project box and you want to run the power cord through your project box. This is actually would have been the second time I screwed up. You didn't see the first time. I deleted that footage. This one I'm not deleting. I'll just show my shame. Alright. So, actually, that's good. I just need a power cord on there. So, again, we're going to go white cord on the relay to white cord on the power plug. The power plug is now pulled through the project box. White to white. Positive to positive. Green to green, round to round. And then do wire not that. And we're going to go lastly positive to positive. Black to black. Positive, positive. And we are going to wire nut that. Beautiful. Here we go. Garage door opener connected to controller wires on the relay. Black, white, green power going to black, white. Always double check your work. So the black, white, green on the plug. I'm going to toss everything in my project box over here as neatly as I possibly can because there's a lot of junk in here. I'll, just, I'll clean this up a little bit with wire ties and that kind of stuff before I go get off camera. But when all is said and done, you will have a project box with one black power cord coming out of it. And this should control your garage door. Next up is how to do the software part of this. I am using a Mikasa Verde, Verde? Something like that. Vera 3. There's a very, very easy plugin to cheat with, and that's what I'm using. So, next part is that. The one thing I'm not going to go over is how to pair the relay with your Mikasa Verde or uh, Slage. I think it's, it works with Slage. Slage or any other bridge. I'm not going to go over that. You should know how to kind of control that. And there's a lot of other tutorials for that. So this is going to be controlling this. I'm going to zip tie this, clean this up and then come back and show you the softer part of this. Stand by. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, we're back. Here we are back to the software part of this demonstration. Here is Mikasa Verde software. I'm, go I'm logged into my Vera 3 here, so I don't have any fancy video capture software. I'm just coming from a straight camera to the screen, so deal with it. Again, here's the Vera 3. We're logged into our dashboard now. We're going to go into apps. Are the apps I have installed. We're going to go into install apps. It's going to load and we are going to search for garage. D G A R A G E. I'm going to show and one app pops up and it's garage door. Fantastic, fantastic app. I was messing with this program for a little while. Um, well, the software for a little while and I was having problems with my delays and everything else. I finally got them down and then I found this program, of course, after I got everything down. And I thought, wow, this makes everything a lot easier. So this program is absolutely fantastic for the beginner, like myself. Go ahead and click install. Wait for everything to install. You see up here, the unit's busy. Wait for it to finish doing its thing. After it finishes doing its thing, you're going to see a red light here. X out, go into devices. You're going to see a new device, and you're going to see failure. That's fine. Don't worry about it. That should happen. 
Up here, you're going to see initialize door sensor dev num and door switch dev num. Essentially, you have to put your door sensor and your door switch IDs in the new kind of device, virtual device, I guess you call it, that you set up. Very easy to do this. This is the door sensor. Go into tools, go into advance, scroll down to the ID, not the alt ID up here. You want to actually scroll down to the ID itself. In my case, it's 14. So dual garage door sensor, 14. Come back into the virtual device. Go into advance, come down here, and you see door sensor dev number, door switch dev number exactly what you saw up here that it needs so my door sensor door sensor was 14 I'm gonna put the number 14 in here okay now it needs my door switch number and go in here go to advanced same thing not the alt ID I'm gonna go down to the normal ID so my switch is number 16 with the alt ID back here we're gonna go in here we're gonna go to advanced and we're going to go to door switch dev and we're going to be 16 in here that's it we're going to go ahead and we're going to save that we're going to continue here we're going to let it do its thing unit is busy after it becomes unbusy and updates hopefully if you did everything right this lua startup failure should go away that red dot should go away and we should be in business to go to the last and final step and that is to create a scene and that's it. We're back. You can see it's set up. We're good to go. The lock is unlocked. As you can see down here, dual garage sensor. A little man is red here, which means the garage is open. This sensor is tripped. The garage is open. The single door I have out there, it's closed. That's why that one is not tripped. So we're done. The next and final step we have to go into now is automation. Go into automation go into new scene and we are going to create a new scene to open and close the garage door so we're going to go to gar oh, let's make this dual garage door control dual garage door control we're going to make that lock and essentially all that's going to do is trip it's going to turn that relay on for five seconds it's going to turn the relay off in five seconds so on off Essentially, you're clicking the button of your garage door remote control. If you hit it again, on, off. Again, you're clicking the button of your garage door remote control. So you can click on lock, you can click on confirm changes. I'm going to make this room garage because that's where it is. And we are going to save it. And assuming that we did everything right, dual garage door control down here. Went to the units, finished being busy up here. Assuming we have done everything right, we're going to hit this little run button and the garage door should miraculously open. Everything's updated, let's see if it works. That's the garage door. That's it stopping. That's it closing. I should say that's it opening because we started with it open. So now you see the transmit was okay. You see the garage door is open. You see that was active, and you see the garage door virtual room that we created is unlocked. Let's go back into automation, go back into the control, we'll hit run, you can hear the garage door closing now. See the transmit was okay down here, the transmission was alright, the door is closing. So that should become untripped momentarily when the garage door is completely shut, which just closed and now we are untripped. So, that's it from start to finish. Hardware, software, how to create a Z-Wave garage door control opener. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them, and I will get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. It's December, so Merry Christmas.